Hi. Hi. Yeah, this is uh, Shirley Turcott. And Dara Williams. Yeah, we're just uh, going to try to answer some of the questions that have come into us. And on, um, let's see, one of the questions we had here. Um, what's the difference between focusing and focusing oriented therapy and Aboriginal focusing oriented therapy? Mm. Oh, that's a lot to. It is a lot. <laughs> uh, well, I would say the philosophy is the number one. You know, Aboriginal focusing oriented therapy is so, uh, something that came out of. Um, uh, Aboriginal psychotherapy and then we kind of uh, I kind of connected it up with uh, with focusing with Jean Genlet's work mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I met Jean way back in I guess it was the late 70s uh, Jean Genlin and um, or could yeah I think or no it was the early 80s and um, and he saw what I was doing in in Aboriginal psychotherapy and I saw what he was doing in focusing and uh, and I had met a few other people that were involved in the focusing community, and so we married up uh, the the indigenous psychotherapy with the with the focusing oriented therapy. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to talk about the differences a bit between AFOT and? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know that um, I can speak to the myriad number if there are multiple um, differences between the two. But kind of for me, the core difference. Um, I began my focusing training through focus. I came to AFOT through focusing. So my first experience um, of the um, implicit, explicit, and the felt sense came through the more uh, traditional or, or um, Gendlin's um, focusing. And uh, sat in on a weekend with Shirley and was struck immediately by the sense of both being home and here's what I think one of the major differences is the immediate kind of engagement of ancestral intergenerational um, um, trauma and working with it. And I had never experienced that in any of the other trauma informed practices or tools that I was aware of or had come in contact with. So, so, so you would say like looking at that felt sense um, as a collective felt sense and correct. interconnected and intergenerational felt sense. Correct. Rather than of the individual. Correct. So yeah. the focus in AFOD is the philosophy of collective. Yeah, and making central to the complex trauma work the historical oppression. I mean, that's, you know, that it's integral to AFOT. It's not like a side thing that you get to, but it's actually one of the um, uh, intrinsic components of AFOT. Mm -hmm. And how is that so important to, um, because that was another question, mm. how is that important to, to your, the communities that you work with? Well, the communities that I work with are, are mostly um, communities of color that are living in the United States, um, uh, probably predominantly black community, but generally, you know, people of color. And same with me, too, working, you know, in the indigenous communities, coming out of genocide, mm -hmm. coming, can, coming out of acute oppression. Um, and acute trauma, which continues to now. It's not something that has stopped. So there's the historical trauma and then there's the ongoing um, continuation of terrorism and trauma and oppression on, on our communities. Right. Um, and those are the communities that I work in. And I think the big piece about uh, AFOT that's different than a lot of um, other bodies of therapy is that you look at the uh, genocidal and complex trauma uh, fallout as, um, as experiential in some ways superiority because that experience has brought you a lot of um, knowledge, mm -hmm. intergenerational knowledge, mm -hmm. knowledge, interconnected knowledge. So your your flashbacks and trauma trouble are not looked at as being uniquely unwell. Mm -hmm. the, the, the wellness piece uh, has a whole different uh, philosophy to it in Indigenous psychotherapy. Right, the wellness piece and the factor of um, engaging with this uh, this history, with this trauma, from a perspective of the individual and the collective. 
that it's not just something to be worked out, moved through, resolved, however you might say it, through the individual, but you're actually working collectively, that in the room, there's just more than that individual even. Yeah, the mm -hmm. person sitting there in session is the person interconnected through time right. and space, right. which is the indigenous philosophy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have, the, you have them and all of their ancestors and anything coming present too. So... Uh, how you frame your therapeutic questions are quite different. Correct. And mm -hmm. also being able to lean into the land and the medicines in a different kind of way because everything's animate in the indigenous philosophies. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, you were never alone wherever the trouble was happening. You were also, you know, the the trees, the plants, the sun, the animals, uh, everything around you is alive and with you and connected and interconnected mm -hmm. so there's mm -hmm. you know um, a healthier way of making it through extreme oppression and genocide for those that do manage to live through it and survive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that that speaks to the resilience of these communities and how the communities have innately and naturally held on to pieces of that even though there's a remembering that happens when they come into to, uh, AFLT, there's a remembering of that wisdom, but that wisdom's been functioning all along. 40,000 years. Which <laughs> has what's allowed people to still be here and not yeah. totally yeah. annihilated and genocided. And so um, when you're sitting with a client in, in AFOT, you really recognize them as being very well through the generations. Mm -hmm. There's a health and a, mm -hmm. an experiential knowledge there that... that um, that is that just shifts how how you sit with somebody who's been through complex trauma. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're sitting them through sitting with them through what I would like to call bright eyes, mm -hmm. you know, bright and alive, and you're you're not just seeing the trouble. You're seeing um, the experiential knowledge that has come into having been through such trouble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that yeah. Um, you know, it's often a question, I've had that question too, and it was one of the questions, which is, uh, who's struggling the most, the oppressed or the oppressor? Hmm. Like, who's, who, where does the unwellness, um, because there's always this idea that with complex trauma, if you've experienced horror, you know, that you're really unwell from it. Um, but at the, at the other side of the coin, if you've been doing that, if you are the oppressor or the mm -hmm. bystander or the person that is like blinded eyes from it or whatever, um, what about that unhealing or that unwellness and um, is that as great a struggle? And when I enter into my own self looking at my, um, because I'm both colonized and colonizer, I'm indigenous and I'm also non-indigenous and mm -hmm. and I can sort of feel the you know um, I feel on the side of me that has that oppressor whatever that is that comes down there that that may be even harder to treat because of the power mm -hmm. associated with mm -hmm. it yeah and the invisibility of it yeah the power and the invisibility of it because mm -hmm. that that non-wellness or that way of being in the world is being uh, held or grounded or it comes out of um, unawareness and privilege and not even having an inkling of a, a awareness and, and the systemic support unfortunately right, totally the systemic support <laughs> to, totally. to allow that to flourish in such an unhealthy way for so long through the generations that may be a more difficult thing to treat than the than the than the survivor of the trauma mm, <laughs> to, mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. you know at least collectively when you look at that collectively uh, how are we doing around the collective treatment of that? <laughs> yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. Some interesting questions there. It is. Um, uh, I had another question here about who are the teachers of AFOT? And also, um, yeah, so you, the teachers of AFOT, you know, we our teachers across the nations are people who've been through, um, through the experience of... of um, of genocide or experience of oppression, uh, we feel because a thought because you're you know there's no real uh, the curriculum is something that's always in flux because decolonization mm -hmm. is always in flux and every connection you're in with a student body is always in connection. Um, the the person there who is doing the instructing 
really needs to be able to let go of traditional curriculum and mm -hmm. be able to be in intergenerational connection mm -hmm. and have some sense of experience with, um, uh, with, with having tasted the, the, you know, the, um, oppression. Yeah, I think, I think that there's a, physiological um, level. well, that's just it. I think that there's a knowing that comes in the body that then influences or informs the mind and the heart that only comes through the experience, the lived experience of, um, living in, um, uh, in relationship to all of these colonization, oppression, genocide, all of these, you only, and comes down through the generations, comes down um, both culturally and in the body through the generations. That's not something that you can know um, intellectually. It's a body knowing, which is a lot about what focusing and AFLT is about. And so, yeah, the instructors, the predominance of the instructors are people of color, whether they're um, uh, Canadian from the Aboriginal community in, in Canada or from the black, Latino, um, black, brown, yellow, red communities here in the United States because there are a little bit different histories in these two countries. Uh, but I think that's a really important distinction to make. And certainly what that means is that people, therapists, counselors, human service workers who are not people of color can certainly learn the techniques and tools of AFLT and be able to engage and utilize those tools in the work with clients, um, but in terms of the people who are teaching it, I think that uh, the only way for people to be able to learn it is when it's coming through the experience yeah, um, that's that so it important. came out of. And I guess that's why we we keep the A there, the mm. I, the Indigenous Focusing Oriented Therapy or the Aboriginal Focusing Oriented Therapy because it's so easily appropriated and then put down into a curriculum that would bypass that interconnectedness and the and we are the fear of not being able to to uh, and it, and it's a true fear because it happens all the time the appropriation of a uh, of um of um our knowledge mm -hmm. and uh and um it getting you know watered down in a way that would miss the interconnectedness that's so important and the experience that's so important mm -hmm. so it's the experiential knowledge of trauma that really fuels the teachings and interconnectedly through time. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. unless somebody has that background and that experience, uh, it would shift the it would shift the curriculum considerably. Really. Yeah. 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 And to my knowledge or my awareness, AFOT IFOT is the only complex trauma therapeutic intervention that I'm aware of. I'm not saying that it's the only one, but the only one that I'm aware of that arises or comes from or is grounded in. Um, um, an indigenous philosophy, and other than a practical one, yes. rather than you know, uh, you know, the the thing is, there's a lot of indigenous philosophies out there, but having a tool that's hands on and practical, that's applying it. Mm -hmm. So to have an applied uh, philosophy is what's really important, mm -hmm. and I think that's where Gene Genlin and I got along so well through the years. Uh, you know, he loved a thought. He loves. He loved what we were up to, and um, I had many many discussions discussions and he would often call me even for some clinical supervision on a strange case he was working on or whatever um, but the idea that um, um, that the focus on the collective in an applied practical mm -hmm. way a hands-on applied practical way where you could actually see the ancestors in the room mm -hmm. you could I, I, and you could actually see those coming and you could look at a felt sense in in a deeply collective way um, you know, this is something he really appreciated. And so the marrying of the indigenous philosophy and the focusing, uh, really was very, a, a really smooth trend, a smooth, um, uh, process for us. Um, and, you know, I, I did not do a lot of focusing work with the focusing community outside of the indigenous communities where we were applying a different kind of, in, of focusing, um, but I, I, I do appreciate that they're quite different, that there, there are some yeah. real surprising differences there. And I, I, but I mean, similarities I think another, too. I think another reason to maintain um, the distinction of the, the, the label of the um, application 
as AFOT, IFOT is so that people from communities of oppression and genocide can find us. Like if it's, if it's, if it's, so um, true. FOT, which is great, but that doesn't pop out like, oh, there's my home. There's something, a, a practice or a way. And also genocide is such a huge experience and, uh, and oppression is such a huge experience that some of the traditional uh, therapies, uh, the Western therapies, mm -hmm. just don't apply because mm -hmm. the, the, the I isn't going to cut it. I have a feeling or it's I or where that felt sense belongs to you and solely you. Um, that, you know, the, 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 if they're such extraordinary traumatic experiences um, that if they're not held in the collective, they become unmanageable. Right. And right. and uh, it's surprising the wellness that comes when you recognize that you were never in this alone. Mm -hmm. It's not just about mm -hmm. you, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Time uh, and time again. Time and time again. Yeah. Uh, the A fought peace. The A in there. The I in there. The indigenous philosophy, and the land itself actually ends up saving lives. Mm -hmm. uh, really seriously saving lives. Absolutely. So we really do need to keep that distinction and and um, apply apply the indigenous philosophy not just talk about indigenous philosophy but apply it within the psychotherapy itself mm -hmm. am i saying that right do you think right enough for me i, <laughs> I have to say that <laughs> you get it <laughs> we don't know if this is helpful we did answer a couple of questions do, do you think we is there anything else is there we needed anything to else? oh I, you know what no i think we got most of the questions i think um, it was a pleasure sitting with you. Yeah, and with Shirley. From New York. <laughs> We're sitting in, in her partner's office in New York, which is kind of lovely. And I'm just going to catch a plane back to Vancouver, back to Coast Salish territory. And it's just lovely to say hello. Yeah. Bye from, from Dara and Take Shirley. Take good care. Take Thanks care. for listening. Bye. <laughs>